Hi, I'm Erica Ritter, a volunteer with the Animal Alliance of Canada and the Animal Protection Party of Canada. And a longtime effort by the Animal Alliance and the Animal Protection Party of Canada and other wildlife organizations to see a ban on the lethal poisoning of wildlife is coming to a crucial head soon. Literally within weeks, Health Canada's Pest Management Agency is going to decide whether or not to ban the use of strychnine and compound 1080, which is similarly lethal. The decision specifically affects Alberta as the last province in Canada to seek their continued use. And the APPC and its members, that's you and me, can play a vital role in getting this ban over the finish line just as you did in the past, for instance, with the thousands of letters you sent to the Minister of Health resulting in a ban on strychnine to kill Richardson's ground squirrels. With me is Liz White, the familiar face of so many campaigns to explain the importance of this particular issue at this specific moment in time and how we can all help. Hi, Liz. Hi. <clears throat> so what is the main thrust of this campaign? Uh, the main thrust of this campaign is to get the Minister of Health and the PMRA, better known as the Pest Management Regulatory Agency, who's authorized to ban these poisons, to get Alberta, which is, as you pointed out, the only province in Canada that's left using these substances to come into line with the rest of the country, um, a nationwide ban to end the use of these outmoded and ineffective and cruel methods of wildlife management, which really means wildlife killing, um, <clears throat> which entail the use of bait. Um, and the two poisons that they use are compound 1080 and strychnine. They kill wolves, coyotes, and they are targeting bears, although bears have not actually been poisoned by this, except one grizzly bear who attack farm animals and wildlife. Uh, and the wildlife is about caribou. So this is an urgent call to action to contact the Minister of Health and your Member of Parliament and urge them to push the PMRA and the Minister of Health to ban these poisons for all wildlife and farm animal management. Then why is it so important that this particular agency, the PMRA, the Pest Management Control Agency, is... is um, being asked to bring Alberta in line with the rest of the country. Why this alliance of these two bodies? Well, they're the agency that holds the power to decide. And the urgency of this particular decision is that once they've agreed to the continued use of strychnine and compound 1080, they won't review it for another 10 or 15 years. So we're talking about a very, very long time before the agency would ever look at it again. We can appeal that decision, and we have done so numerous times and been turned down every single time. And it's really important now because Alberta has not complied over the last 10 years or more to the requirements that, that the PMRA claim makes the use of these things safe. They have not, um, they have not complied. And so looking at the PMRA, which is undergoing the review right now, we're asking them to look at the actual non-compliance because these products are being put out on the landscape and 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 there's no, um, people aren't picking them up. People aren't complying with the length of time that they're supposed to be out there or even being able to track how many animals have actually died as a result and whether they were the target or non-target animals. So we, um, we've been asking over the years for the Minister of Health and the PMRA to um, institute a ban. Alberta has continued the violations uh, pertaining to the so-called safe use and handling of these poisons. And despite these violations, the PMRA on its preliminary consideration is considering approval of their continued use. So that's why it is so important for us to all get together now and try and push the Minister of Health and the PMRA to make the right decision. And the decision is, it is, as I said right, right at the beginning, it is coming up literally in weeks, right? This is yes. the first time in 10 to 15 years. Yeah. And the last time within 10 to 15 years. When when exactly uh, will this decision be made? It's to be made sometime 
in February. We don't have an exact date, but sometime in February. We do have a meeting with the PMRA. We've had one meeting with them. Didn't go very well. We have another meeting with them. Um, they tend not to talk to people outside their sphere of consultation. We are an anomaly to that. And um, and I think probably they consider us a bother. But in fact, we've been able to impact very quietly um, a number of decisions made by the PMRA. And I think we have an opportunity to do that now. And if we push right now, it makes it harder for them to just roll over and say, yeah, let's continue the use. Mm -hmm. And and the resistance uh, from their point of view is 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 based on what? Why why are they so reluctant to hear this evidence? And considering that you know all the other provinces and have you know gone along with banning for very good reasons these two yeah. poisons. What why it what what is the resistance factor mm -hmm. here from the MRA? I think partly. Uh, there was a study done by the Environment Committee a number of years ago, which pointed out that the PMRA has a real conflict in their mandate. They are to um, to protect humans and the environment, um, that would include animals, on the one hand, and on the other hand, they're to promote and and facilitate the use of pesticides in in our environment. So they talk a lot to the companies that produce these pesticides, when they register the pesticides, the PMRA gets the funding for it. And mm -hmm. so, you know, if you turn your back on the people who actually fund um, your ability to do this job and so on, it makes the uh, it makes the decision for the PMRA that much harder. That's why it's important for us to be the other side of that push and to let them know that there are people out there um, that are opposed to this use and that we are prepared to write letters and make it politically difficult for the minister to turn his back on this. So um, the approach then is is to write letters. It is it is to make clear that there are people out here who, as you say, are aware of what these issues are, even aware of what the conflicts the PMRA has internally about this is. And and that's that's the chief avenue of of redress. How how exactly would will that happen? What are you urging members to do specifically? Right. I think it's difficult to understand how this process works, but in actual fact, the PMRA is, is shielded from public opinion um, and public uh, pressure uh, for very particular reasons. So it's actually the Minister of Health um, who is who has the power uh, to step in, in situations, I believe, where there is a wrong decision being made, which I think is the case. And I think we have a strong case. So we're urging people to do a number of different things, depending on what they feel comfortable with. The first is, if they have the, if they feel comfortable to meet with their MP, particularly if they have a liberal MP, but every MP, I think, is worth going after because then across the country, we understand that they, they have been notified as to our concerns about this. The second is to um, write letters to the minister. Um, the last time we did a big uh, campaign to, uh, to the Minister of Health about this, we managed to generate 10,000 letters into the minister in a very short period of time. And I can tell you, because I did the FO, the ATIP, for her notes that they took real consideration of the situation. And that's how I think in part, we got the Richardson ground squirrel win. Um, the third thing is to um, talk to other people about it and see if they can so spread the word. Um, if you don't feel comfortable meeting with your MP, writing a letter to your MP would be great as well. And a personalized letter um, carries a lot of weight as opposed to just a, um, an e petition or whatever, which is really easy to do. The, you know, politicians measure how much energy did you put into this issue? If you just did a click of a button, not much. But if you sat down and wrote a letter thinking out all the issues, that means something. That person is probably a voter, probably goes to the polls, and I should listen to that person. So um, th that's basically the extent of it. And if anybody has any questions or concerns or needs guidance, please feel free to contact our office, um, email me or call 
and we'll certainly help in any way we can. Yeah, because I think, I mean, um, we all wish we had your expertise. We wish you had your extensive knowledge of these issues and 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 your sense of how to, to go at things. But certainly the rest of us can benefit from that if, if we ask for information on how to do this. And, and as you said, the more personalized um, the letter or, or the phone call or the meeting is certainly the, the more effective with politicians. And I think having done that, we asked for when it was uh, the minister was uh, Jean-Yves Duclos, we met with his office and he got us a meeting with the PMRA um, staff who were looking at this particular uh, decision, reevaluation. And I can tell you that they were terribly uncomfortable with having to talk to somebody outside their sphere of consultation. And it was really an enlightening thing. So the more we can punch a hole in that veil that they use to protect themselves and their decisions, the the more chance we have of winning this thing. All right. Well, I I um I I believe that with with you in front of the campaign, chances are good, and anything that the rest of us can do to support will will put it over the finish line. Thank you so much, Liz. Thank you.